All right, guys, today we're playing Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragonhead Keep, a Wonderlands one-shot adventure. This I got for free on Epic Games. I didn't pay too much attention if it was free this week or just because I own Borderlands 3. No, no. Anyway, it's supposed to be, seems to be more like a role-playing based um, Borderlands style experience. This game, the full game actually, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands coming out next year. So I'll give you a taste of what to expect here. So we're gonna give it a try after my first go at it here where the game crashed completely on me. Um, hopefully this so goes well. You want to what sets this game apart from every other Borderlands game that we've ever played is that we're technically playing a board game with our characters starring in it. So think of kind of like along the lines of D&D or a game like Hero Quest, which came out in the 90s. But basically, we're playing characters on a board game, so the adventure itself is like a Dungeons & Dragons style module, that kind of thing. And this gameplay model gives the game the opportunity to make some decisions that are different than other Borderland games we played in the past. If you played any Borderlands game, you'll be familiar with the record or the gameplay that you'd expect. You'd explore areas, kill enemies, a bunch of looting. You know, there seems to be a never-ending supply of ammo and weapons, um, following quests, and generally progressing the story. So, the considering the game is based on board game like styled kind of Dungeons and Dragons kind of genre, it um, has those kind of themed enemies so instead of psychos and that kind of thing we see pixies we see trent spiders skeletons everything you'd expect the neat thing here too is because the game is based on a board game where we're playing a board game while having our adventure um, things can change at a moment's notice for example uh, this situation here is early on in the game where you run into a boss that's significantly higher level than you level 41 instead of my measly level five and the gameplay is changed on the fly when the players that are playing the board game complain and ask for something different so i really enjoyed how they had this twist because of the board game aspect of the game one of the best examples i can give you of how this game board or Board game mechanic works is this example here, this jumping puzzle, which was frustrating me because it was nearly impossible. Um, Tiny Tina there, she makes an adjustment so that the game you could maybe make the jump. And I mean, I tried this a few times and it was frustrating too. And in the end, because of one of the characters not liking jumping puzzles, she changed it to a bridge. So I really appreciated when puzzles like this worked out, where instead of basically annoying you to death with it, they would solve the problem and make it easier for you. Combat for me in this game was pretty much run-of-the-mill Borderlands. And the one thing I ended up doing or early on is just a combination of using magic missile grenades which provide slag damage which means they take more damage from other sources and then a combination of a couple guns. It got pretty repetitive. Like, I mean, the medieval enemies were nice and for the most part it was okay, but there were times too where I would get stuck and die for no apparent reason. There were many examples like this too where I just died and there was no chance for me of killing any kind of enemy to respawn myself, which got very, very frustrating very quickly. And this happened multiple times throughout the game. And instead of making the game enjoyable it was frustrating as hell like many of the last um borderlands games there's the ability to upgrade slots ammo backpack slots ammo capacity and that so if you were to really grind this game you could certainly carry more ammo carry more stuff makes life easier it's a part of borderlands games which kind of convinces you to grind a little bit and you certainly can though i didn't spend a whole lot of time doing this when it comes down to it this game is a combination of 
some of the past Borderlands games with a new kind of twist being a board game based game. So there's some interesting twists there. Different enemies, though technically they're similar to Borderlands enemies of the past. Same skill level system, same kind of weapons, excessive amount of weapons and ammo that you need. Um, crazy fights where all you're doing is mashing buttons, hopping around, hoping for the best. And all in all, this was basically a Borderlands experience. So in terms of whether or not this would be a good purchase for you, I mean right now it's free on the Epic Game Store for this week up until um, Thursday, which I mean that's when we to take advantage of this. It's also multiplayer, so I mean it's a game you can play with your friends right now. It's Borderlands. You can get it for free this week or the regular price I think is 13 bucks or $14, which is very inexpensive for any kind of multiplayer game. In terms of gameplay length, though, you're looking at, we'll say four to five hours. It took me about five hours, just over five hours to finish the game. Um, in my case, I bet you about half hour of that was dying in the final boss fight, particularly one part I won't share it with you here to ruin the game, but it just, I couldn't beat one part and it was very frustrating and I died the same way about two or three times before finally making it happen. So all in all it was a good experience. This game gave me some laughs, was entertaining. You certainly could play it more. I didn't finish all the side quests. I didn't really feel that there was any point but if you're a completionist I'm sure you could get maybe even double the amount of time out of it. I don't know. It, it, it would be up to you how long it would take. Um, Level-wise, too, I only made it up to, I think, level 16, which I think max level's 50, or, well, it'd be up in the 50 mark, and it was enough to finish one skill tree. I guess I didn't show any skill tree images here, but um, it was okay. I didn't try the multiplayer aspect of it either, which I might try later with my kids or some friends just to give it a go and see if it's any easier or harder. I would hope that it would scale with the number of people playing. But the one thing for me that really kind of ended up happening here is I, I basically use the same style of weapons. I use two weapons basically the whole game, a shotgun and a gun like this, uh, AR of some sort. Uh, I always use magic missile grenades because all I did was home in on the target, slag damage so I could do more damage, and I also used my turret. So that was it. Like, I mean, there wasn't a lot of variety. There was no real needs. I tried using rocket launcher once. It was a waste of time. Um, submachine guns, I never got one that did any kind of damage that was worth using. And um, pistols, I tried two, and it wasn't really worth it either. It, it was a strange game. Like, I mean, I only ever used two types of guns, I used one kind of grenade, I, I think I used four different shields all together in the whole four hour or five hour playthrough, so I, I don't know, I, I mean I'm really interested to see what the full version of the game is like when it comes out there in 2022, I bet you it'll be good, especially with the whole board game elements where, or the D&D style elements where things can change depending on how Tina decides to change them. For the most part it was positive any of those kind of interventions in the game. So anyway I'm going to leave you with that there. It's maybe not the most comprehensive review, review but it gives you an idea what to expect and uh, I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are on the game. If you wouldn't mind sharing them in the comment section below I'd really appreciate it. And otherwise thank you for watching today. We'll catch you in the next video.